How fast can you fully complete Geometry Dash? A couple weeks ago, my friend claimed that getting every single achievement in 100 hours was physically impossible. So I put that to the test. As I opened Stereo Madness, the first out of 21 main levels, I felt locked in immediately. These levels were crucial for the run as each would not only give you 2 achievements for beating them, but would also reward you with 3 secret coins. While there are only 63 possible secret coins from all main levels, I'll have to receive 130 with some interesting yet painful strategies later in the video. The main levels felt nostalgic almost. I haven't touched these relics of the past for years, feeling fresh yet challenging after all this time. However, as I progressed, it became clear that these levels were far from perfect. Despite being ingrained into my mind, I had to search up tutorials on how to receive these secret coins in some of the earlier stages, like dry out. After obtaining 10 secret coins, I unlocked our first demon level, Club Step. While the level wouldn't be too challenging, the rest of the demons could prove otherwise. Truth be told, I'm not a big fan of main levels. So after beating Theory of Everything 2 and Deadlocked, I never touched these levels again. While Theory of Everything 2 was decent, Deadlocked is just terrible. This is a perfect example of the player not feeling at fault. Tell me, could you sight read this first try? Previously, main levels introduced features nicely, but with update 2.0, both official levels went overboard and became unreadable. Luckily though, after Finger Dash, I would finally complete every main level. 3 hours in with 66 out of 266 achievements. While my pace was incredible, it would quickly slow down. Gauntlets were introduced in update 2.1, and like many features in that update, it feels helplessly rushed. Sure, the levels aren't beyond terrible, but I hardly feel myself immersed. There's nothing challenging about it. I'm either irritated at creators not knowing how to create, or desperately wanting to fall asleep. This doesn't feel like a gauntlet. Feels like 5 stages Rob randomly generated from the featured page. The one time Rob did end up adding a relevant level to the gauntlet with an interesting idea, it was removed as players thought it was too challenging. Luckily, I would have to painstakingly complete every single one, as I only need 6 for my next currency, the shards. I could go on forever about shards. Also introduced in update 2.1, this feature aimed to encourage players to explore gauntlets, which would give you shards. Creative idea, but the execution is beyond terrible. Firstly, completing a gauntlet barely rewards you with any shards, forcing you to get them from daily chests. Am I waiting for a Clash of Clans upgrade? What kind of system is this? You could alternately get them from demon keys, but they only reward you with a minuscule amount as well. But more on that later. With my newly found riches of a couple hundred stars, I was given the honor of breaking into this poor security dude's vault. You're supposed to solve riddles, and you'll get a reward afterwards. However, unless Rob thinks average players from the Matrix, these are just impossible to understand. Enter 8, 16, 30, 32, 46, and 84, and you get an icon. Nowhere else in the game is something even remotely similar mentioned or referenced to this. It would be so engaging if the Vault Keepers would occasionally give you a challenge level or Simon Says type game to actually test your skill, not to see how fast you can type up the Wikipedia page. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, there are over 3 of these vaults, with the second one giving you a level dubbed, The Challenge, that once completed would allow you to receive a reward. The level has to be challenging, right? No, anyone terrible at the game could probably beat this in a couple attempts. Disappointing, but what do you receive as a reward? Well, the Vault Keeper allows you to go into the basement to collect this cube. Hopefully there isn't a suspicious figure wanting to sell me a white substance sitting here. Okay, I was close. This mysterious figure offers us a deal, saying, help me get out of here, and I'll make it worth your while. Then, it's revealed that there are three locks near his gate, and we must find the keys for them littered across the game. Now, we don't have the power to do that yet, but we finished our first two vaults with exactly 100 achievements. Unlike the last two vaults, this one is pretty challenging to unlock. Firstly, you have to go to Scratch's shop, likely an ex-convict and you have to purchase this master emblem. After going into the basement, the player has to go to the back of the main level, and click this random door and collect a couple icons along with our first key. No idea how people found this, but that's besides the point. While this is more interesting than the other vaults, the execution here is pretty strange, and the reward is next to none. By now, we are approaching 150 achievements, and decided to venture into the world of map packs, and little did I know, this would be one of the most grueling experiences I've ever faced. Unlike many other features, map packs are a complete time capsule compared to everything else, with it being introduced in update 1.6. Secret coins in official levels are fairly easy to collect, but with map packs that gets flipped on its head, forcing you to complete 3 levels to get 1 coin, and we have to get over 70. 
I love the idea of map hacks, but early on, the levels were an absolute snooze fest, except for one encounter. Square Bunchers is a level that strikes fear in the hearts of many, as it features some of the most confusing gameplay imaginable. The whole gimmick is that the level progressively gets more difficult, but despite being a 4 star, the ending is about an 8. There's nothing normal about this pack, far from it. While the next few packs would be relatively easy yet uninteresting, it would soon get much worse. I had also collected all three keys I needed to unlock the monster in the basement. Now I might have just helped the fugitive on the run to escape, but hey, I got a neat icon. Now the monster does come that he'll destroy the world with Geometry Dash, however it's unfinished and we'll finally get some lore in the update 2.2, whenever that comes out. While doing the speedrun, I had a lot of people tell me that map packs are overhated. While some levels aren't that bad, when it gets bad, it's inhumane. I wouldn't wish some of these levels upon my worst enemy. Take the Ruby Pack, a seemingly innocent pack, as it's only rated as hard, but once you enter the pack, it all goes downhill from here. This is Dynamic on Track, which has a history of controversial updates. The creator would update the level multiple times, making it harder than it already was. This near demon was sitting right in the middle of one of the easiest map packs, leading to many quitting map packs entirely. Luckily though, after years of terror, the creator would finally update the level to be easier. The level is still challenging, but I was able to pull through after a couple attempts. But I couldn't say the same about Shiny Pack, which contained two abysmal stages. Stereo Dynamicness was also created by the creator of Dynamic on Track, and I would say this level is underhated. Most people gravitate towards Dynamic on Track, but you don't really hear about this map. Personally, the level could be even worse than Dynamic on Track, as the map features completely unnecessary difficulty spikes. You could also say the same about Time as Eco by Gel, a level full of triple spikes, one of the laziest ways to inflate difficulty. Gel owns an entire trilogy of these triple spike amalgamations, but more on that later. There's absolutely nothing challenging about the challenge pack. The levels are either a snooze fest or buggy messes like Kayla Go V2 by Rabbit's Cole. Despite the beginning cube being relatively easy, the drop turns into a demon. Similarly to Square Adventure, this section is a complete difficulty spike, and I found myself quickly forgetting things. You could also call this a case of skill issue, however the next section definitely does not belong in a 6 star. While looking visually appealing, the gameplay is far from that, being horrendous. It wouldn't be long until I approached the color pack, which featured another level in Geld's trilogy. The level is a near identical copy to the last, and spending this much attempts on a 6 star should be criminal. Luckily though, Geld's last level in the trilogy wouldn't be as bad, despite being in the warp pack. With every harder pack out of the way, I approached the Insane and Demon packs, which is a gallery of humanity's darkest times. Creations like Clash by Darduck would prove to be hideous pieces of garbage, but you might not notice it by the beginning. The first half of the level, dare I say, is quite enjoyable. It's only until you approach the ending, it all gets thrown out of the window. Despite the section only lasting a couple seconds, it is one of the worst I've ever seen. I am not joking in the slightest, this is something you would see in a harder insane demon, not an 8 star. What was Darnock thinking when he placed this section? This wouldn't be the only Darnock level that was beyond awful, as Mystic Jumper suffered worse. Unlike Clash, the entire level was unenjoyable to play. It feels as playtested as a weekly demon, which is really saying something. I know this is supposed to be a rage game, but every mistake should feel like the player's fault. I don't feel at fault because Jump 800 was off screen, that's just unfair. Now when I saw the Twisted pack, it sent shivers down my spine. This is the first map pack I skipped for perfectly good reasons. Corrupted Kingdom and Tyrant Wall are way worse than you think. Our minds aren't able to comprehend how awful these creations are. To people who think map packs are overhated, how has the beginner pack been? The slight ounce of enjoyability I had while playing the earlier packs has rotted a terrible death. Rest in peace. The Chaos Pack would feature Theory of Relativity. I had never seen the level beforehand and I doubted the comment section. The criticism towards the level felt exaggerated, and those players probably had skill issue. Unfortunately, I would be proved wrong, as just like Mystic Jumper, the entire stage is abysmal. This level used to be decent, however it received many updates similarly to Dynamic on Track that ruined the experience. There's nothing redeeming about this creation, and Rob must have had a terrible day to force players to beat these for achievements. Demon packs definitely were enjoyable, but it was a relief compared to insane packs. Ironic, I know. However, it wasn't free from criticism. Starquake had an interesting concept going. The entire level is mini cube, and you must reverse interesting gameplay gimmicks to get to the ending. Except, I don't even know what you're supposed to do to this day. 
I'm convinced this creation had zero playtested, as it's a completely unreadable and buggy mess. I've never had a grudge against the level until I played Beautiful Chaos. Do not get me started on this amalgamation of a map. Darnock has a thing for putting random mini cute parts at the end of good levels to completely ruin the experience. The amount of hours I poured into this creation upsets me. I despise this level with a passion, and I feel deeply sorry for the voices in Darnock's head that told him to make this. But it doesn't end there. Up until now, I never played Windings. I cannot put this level into words, it is beyond imagination of how disgusting the gameplay is. It is full of unplaytested garbage, unreadable transitions, unnecessary difficulty spikes. Rabbit could in all honesty have the infinity stones to the worst possible level ever created right at his fingertips. This player has to be a convict undercover, there is no other way. Despite this mess, it could have all been prevented. You see, in the spin-off games Sub-Zero and Meltdown, you were actually able to collect 9 secret coins each, allowing you to earn 18 coins from each spin-off game. Rab did add an option to combine your account with Meltdown stats, which should have shaved off 18 map packs, but he never completed the feature, which is saddening. I have no respect for Rob's decision to add map packs. There are so many great creations that fit being a map pack, and you needing to complete over 55 of these is criminal. It took me nearly a week of suffering that after thousands of attempts, I would finally collect my 130th secret coin and would approach 200 achievements. Compared to map packs, user coins felt like heaven. These coins were mind numbing to grind, but not having to play map packs was a relief. The challenge wasn't over just yet though, as I had spent a third of my challenge and only had 2,000 stars out of 10,000 I needed. User coins weren't terrible though, I would have just loved for Rob to shorten the hardest user coin achievement from 1,000 to about 500, which I would end up getting. Despite that though, I realized that if I grinded stars, I would likely pick up all needed coins along the way, and so I began grinding stars. Surprisingly, stars are somehow worse than coins. Coins provided a somewhat interesting challenge, as you need to at least concentrate on how to execute the coin. With stars though, my mind just went on autopilot. Every level looked the exact same, played the exact same. I have nothing but respect for star grinders, as these players have over 200,000 stars and are somehow sane. Pulling that off is incomprehensible. With the amount of stars I was receiving, I was quickly piling up demon keys, which you get every 500 orbs. Unfortunately though, these chests felt very unrewarding. Chests can give you shards, but thus far I only had 20 out of 100 shards, which made the situation feel extremely dire. Furthermore, I needed to get 5,000 diamonds for this achievement, and I was getting barely any. You mainly get diamonds from completing quests, and with me grinding so many stars, I should have gotten a pile of them, right? Well, no, you only get 3 per 8 hours. Does Ron think that players only touch the game for 5 minutes a day? This meant I had to rely on daily chests to receive diamonds and shards, which is such a flawed game concept. Why encourage waiting? You can't spend money in the game, so there's no reason to force players to wait. This will only get worse in 2.2 as Rob plans to introduce many more shard types, with possibly an entire dedicated path. I am praying that in 2.2 you'll be able to collect these in a different manner, as this system is tormenting. After collecting a couple thousand stars, I felt ready for my next challenge. Some players have been playing for years and have every single achievement except this one. To receive this achievement, your level has to go through a terrible creation called the rating system. If your level is good enough, then Rob will allow players to earn stars from it. However, making your level good enough is an entire challenge on its own. I haven't gotten a rate in over a year, and starting fresh on a new account was intimidating. So I began creating a level in 2 hours, nervously placing every single object I could. I went with the Flappy Bird styled level, as I'd be able to get away with copy pasting structures a lot more. Many people in my chat warned me though, the last time my Flappy Bird level was rated was years ago. With only 10 minutes on the clock, I clicked the upload button, and saw the download skyrocket. But surprisingly, nothing happened. Was the chat right? I was panicking, was this all for nothing? I sat myself down, and so began creating another level. I was finishing parts at lightning speeds until after 4 entire hours, I had created an entirely new creation, superior to the last. But again, the levels weren't being graded. Was this all over because some Swedish developer couldn't come across my level in the sea of others? Well, after many restless hours, I got a notification. And another and another. The 4 hour level had been featured, with many quickly flocking to it. I had earned Geometry Star only 3 weeks in. I promptly returned to grinding stars, but I couldn't have guessed what would happen next. 
the two hour level only a day later would get raided. Before doing this challenge, I could have never expected getting two levels raided, but here I am. This is another achievement that sends shivers down people's spines when they hear of it. When playing a level that isn't yet rated, you have the option to assess how hard or easy the level is. The system isn't terrible, it's a cool way of letting players interact with the level. However, the fact that you need to rate over 2000 levels for an achievement is when it crosses the line. In no way is this challenging or enjoyable. This is just bad game design. Nothing about this tests your skill. You just scroll through over 200 pages of levels, not even playing them, just clicking buttons. It is so mind numbing. This achievement would be fine for rating 1, 10, and 100 levels, not 500, 1000, and 2000. Something I noticed over my years on this game is how rushed the achievements feel. Rob comes up with a creative concept and then makes over 30 copies of that concept. While on finals and progression, they feel so uninspired. This wasn't challenging, I just felt relieved after finishing off, as it took me almost 3 hours of painstakingly hitting a few hotkeys. What initially felt like an escape from map pack soon became dreadful. The speedrun had sucked the life out of me, and I began playing on autopilot. I dreaded a realization. I wouldn't be able to finish this challenge off. Despite having done some of the hardest parts of this challenge, diamonds and shards were way too random for me to collect them in time. Days went by slower than ever, and I wanted my purgatory had started to end. What initially was playing some clever official levels or breaking into vaults had become the same mind-numbing tasks over and over again. I felt stuck in time. There's no worse feeling than just waiting. I was waiting while taking action. Not every achievement in a game is going to be great, but Geometry Dash has had some of the worst I've ever seen. From playing levels that weren't playtested, searching up codes that are impossible for a human to solve, playing thousands of the same level, or trying to painfully get your level noticed by RapTap, I'm gonna say it Rob, if you're watching this, your achievements suck. Many players don't notice it since there really isn't any reason to go out of your way for achievements. They don't encourage you to explore, they encourage you to cheat off others. This is bad game design at its peak. If these are the kinds of achievements we're getting in update 2.1, imagine how bad it could get in update 2.2. There are many new shard types coming in 2.2, which will only make the situation worse. We're getting an entirely new star alternative, the moon, which you'll be able to get from platformer levels. Will you need 10,000 as well? Achievements should get you out of your comfort zone while still remaining fair. These achievements feel beyond saving. My final moments were approaching. With 8,499 stars, I began streaming. Except I wasn't going to clutch out and get 10,000 stars. I just wanted to reflect. Reflect on my journey. Was spending 100 hours and 30 days disappearing from my eyes worth it? Despite this journey feeling dreadful, I felt weird. It felt weird to leave, almost sad even. I wasn't sad I wasn't going to play map packs. I was sad I was going to leave all those memories behind. As the final minute approached, I clicked play. Out of all the possible levels I could have chosen, I took my hands off the mouse, and the level played itself. The final level I would ever beat on this account began. Yes, yes it was. Thanks for watching.